start off by having a little introduction about you guys. If uh, you guys want to start. Hello. Oh, there we are. Hello. I am Susan Franceschini. I'm the executive director for Think LA. Think LA is the nonprofit trade association for the advertising, media, and marketing community here in Los Angeles. Um, we have a very close attachment to LMU. We helped create the M School that's here, which which I'm so thrilled to see is flourishing. Um, so I've been with Think LA for the last 17 years. We serve as a hub of connectivity for people that work in that space. Um, we have mentorship programs, we have events and programs that support people that work uh, in, in marketing in every aspect too. And in addition to that, I do some consulting related to personal and professional development at the individual level as well as the corporate level. So that's a little bit about me. Hi, everybody. My name is Cam Kashani. I'm known as the godmother of Silicon Beach. I'm a three-time founder turned transformational coach and global speaker. I specifically work as a coach with women and helping them really connect to, embrace, and lead from their divine feminine. And the divine feminine is a really, really powerful, beautiful energy. It's an authentic empowerment. It's when a woman can truly show up as her true self, truly feeling the, the authentic empowerment that lies within her and bringing that with her to the business world and bringing that with her wherever she goes. Previously, um, I started the first co-working space in LA. This was back in early 2010 before there was anything happening in LA. And it was called Coloft and it ended up spawning the LA technology ecosystem. We had over 1,800 alumni come through our doors, including Uber LA, Instacart, ZipRecruiter, and the early Tinder team. All these guys came out of our space. That's how I got the nickname, the godmother of Silicon Beach. I did not put it on myself. I didn't wake up one day and be like, I'm gonna be godmother now. <laughs> I, I was given that name by the community, which, is, which I'm very grateful for, I'm very grateful to have been a part of that. Hi everyone, my name is Kalika Yap. I think first and foremost I'm a mom. I have two kids, 11 and 12 years old. I'm married to my husband who actually works in the businesses. Um, but I'm a serial entrepreneur. I, my first business I started in 1999. It's called Citrus Studios. And it's a brand agency and we work with some of the largest um, you know, organizations like the Getty, UCLA, USC, um, Maybe, oh, he uh, was actually one of our clients as well, too. <laughs> and uh, uh, Cambridge, uh, Spaghetti. Uh, and uh, I also invented the purse hook, so I see lots of people's purses on the floor. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but your purse on the floor means money out the door, so make sure that you keep your purse off the floor. So I created a purse hook to keep your purse on the floor, uh, off the uh, floor because my grandmother always told me that if you put your purse on the floor, it means you're going to lose money. Um, my, third, my third business is I, oh, I'm from Hawaii, so I had I opened the first waxing salon in Honolulu called the Waxing Company, and my latest startup is a creative agency just for female founders. It's called Orange and Bergamot, and we build a tribe um, and also build your brand. And um, also the host of the Ear Wonder podcast. It's one of, it was named one of the top uh, seven podcasts for women entrepreneurs. Um, by the Entrepreneurs' Organization at Inc. And um, my book is coming out by Harper Collins, April 2020. It's called The Little Brown Book. It's available for pre-sale now. Sorry for the plug. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, you have had quite the journey, um, and now you have four thriving businesses. Um, where would you say your inspiration came from? I always told people that I was an accidental entrepreneur, but I realized, I, I was looking through a couple of my notebooks and realized that in my early 20s, I had written down exactly what my life is today. So my inspiration came from daydreaming, from really having clarity of, of what my life was going to be like, and um, that's that's what led me here today. So I thought it was an accidental entrepreneur. It was, it's hard to start one business, let alone four, and I'm running them concurrently, so it's kind of, but, but it's really a lot of fun. Yeah, amazing. Um, and you've been past president for entrepreneurs' organization, so you are often a mentor, um, often a mentor for other entrepreneurs too. 
Um, what advice would you give specifically to women entrepreneurs and maybe this is advice that you've already given to some women you mentor? Yeah, I really think that you really need to understand your mindset with money. A lot of times people don't understand your relationship with money. When I, I went to NYU and then, and when I left NYU, I left with a lot of credit card bills and a lot of parking tickets because I always expected my parents to pay everything that I had, uh, had done. And it was completely irresponsible. And then when I started taking responsibility of my money and really understanding what my core values were, I was able to align with my purpose and my goals. And from there, it was just like a moonshot. Like the whole world and universe opened to me. And so I, I really think that my advice to women entrepreneurs would be to really understand your relationship with money. Absolutely. Uh, and Cam, you were named one of the most inspirational women in tech being with Godmother in that speech. Um, you are a transformational coach to help women embrace and lead from within. What ways can we inspire other women to be mentors in our community? What ways can we inspire other women to be mentors in our community? That's a great question. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> you know this is going to be such a philosophical answer. <laughs> but it's true. Remember how God he said, be the change? <laughs> That's the answer. So if a woman truly heals her feminine wounds, the wounds that we're carrying around as women, the gender inequalities, all these different things, if we really heal that, that energy by itself propels all the other women around us. As I've done the work that I've done on myself, healing myself, transforming myself, which is why I became a coach, by the way. I became a coach because I went through a very difficult time in my life where I went through a divorce and in the same breath lost my business. And I had to start all over again. I'm also a mom, single mom, twin boys, they're now seven. And back then they were only one and a half. And I found myself in this place where I had no idea who I was, what I'm here for, what, what I'm doing. I have no idea. I have a complete identity crisis. And so I started doing the work on myself, the transformational work, healing myself, and really, really finding my power. And as I did that, I started to have more in-depth conversations with women around me. I started attracting a different type of people around me. I started being able to connect with women in a different way. I started realizing that as I'm speaking my story, I'm helping elevate those around me as well. So my encouragement always is to do you first, right? Do you and heal you, transform you, find your true power within yourself, find the truth of who you are. And by being that and showing up as that, there is no doubt that every single person around you will be impacted positively. We love that, thank you. And Susan, really similarly, you've been quite involved with coaching and mentoring yourself. Do you have specific tools or methods that you use when you're mentoring and coaching, uh, specifically women as well? Probably, um, <laughs> but one thing I think is important to frame is to reframe mentoring. Mentoring doesn't mean always one person with a mentor that meets monthly dot, dot, dot. I always tell people, look for mentoring moments. And that may mean at a conference, that may mean as you're reading a book. You're looking for little bits of inspiration and education. And I always tell people, people always say, well, how do I find a mentor? That seems to be a big question that comes up. And it's, it's very hard to kind of go and ask directly for someone to be your mentor. I say find someone you, you are inspired by, you are intrigued by, follow their work, learn about them, and maybe reach out and say, can I meet you for coffee? I'd love to learn more about your journey. People do like to share their own story. And you don't have to go in and ask for the heart, will you be my mentor? <laughs> it, it's a subtle way to go in, so I always advise people to do that. And I always think about, and to what you were saying too, about kind of knowing yourself, doing that work to know what you want, what your expectations are of a mentor. And it's really, it's not to get a job, it's not for them to do your resume, it's, it's really to learn about their experience and go in and ask for some reflection on yourself. Have them look at your resume. Talk about what was the time you took a job you weren't sure about. What about negotiating my salary? Those things where a mentor has experience and they can share that experience 
is so valuable. So reframe how you look at mentorship, look at mentoring moments, follow people that inspire you, and don't think of it as just a lot. I have many mentors. Some of them know it, some of them don't. And it doesn't have to be a formalized, structured mentorship program. So look for it and follow those people. I don't mean stalk those people. Um, but, but follow them and like I said, reach out. And it can be an exchange over LinkedIn. It can be a simple exchange like that. I'd love to hear your story. How did you get started? And people are usually pretty willing to kind of share their own story um, to lift each other up. And, and remember that you have a story as well, no matter where you are, to share. So it's a mutual exchange. I really think that's important. As I look at mentorship, I want there to be some, I want to learn from you as well if, if we're sitting down in that kind of forum. So um, be open, know yourself a little bit, and ask because all they can do is say no. Absolutely, thank you. And you know, in regards to Think LA, you've been um, really prominent doing that. Um, and that's mentoring on a huge scale. Um, can you tell us about some of the new direction you're taking with that programming, revolving around diversity and inclusion, political marketing, and things like that? Sure. So diversity, inclusion, gender equality is paramount to a lot of what we do in our industry. Like most industries, we, we suffer greatly, but we are making strides to it. So we're really looking at how do we offer and expand expand our mentor programs so that we can reach out to people um, and make sure we do have a more diverse cross-section of mentors and mentees and allow people to self-select, allow people to say, I want, I want a mentor who is X. So we've, just as simple as our process, our application process, making it more robust so we, we can learn better about people and what they want and what their needs are. And also sometimes tell people, Go to somebody that's not like you. You don't have to. You don't have to have a mentor that that you're always comfortable with. It. And I, that's one other point I want to make too. A mentor might challenge you, and don't run away if you're uncomfortable. Because the the sooner you get uncomfortable or get comfortable being comfortable, the, the better you can navigate this world. And so a mentor should challenge you and should should make sure you're kind of elevating yourself. So again, we, we're looking for who's doing great work in diversity and inclusion in our industry and share, showcasing those stories and trying to bring them to market as best practices as well. And like I said, mentorship is a wonderful place to start with that. Amazing, thank you. And Cam, you know, back to Godmother's little home free beach, but I have to tell you, um, what was the most valuable thing that you learned or kind of you've done during that? During which process? Um, kind of, <laughs> becoming a leader. Becoming a leader uh -huh. and becoming kind of a, a mentor to so many of these companies that we're seeing in the creation. What's the most valuable thing I learned? Um, yeah. You know, it goes back to the same thing. I found me. I didn't know who I was, even though I had a really successful business during the Godmother days. <laughs> Uh, when I was running Koloft, Koloft was a huge hit, right? Like I said, it was the hotbed of tech activity, and it really became ground zero for the LA technology ecosystem, and there I am, stuck in my world of self-doubt. My inner dialogue was so incredibly negative, and I really didn't believe in myself. And I kept thinking it's going to get taken away, it's going to get taken away, something's going to happen, imposter syndrome, like all these different things that came up because I hadn't worked on me yet. It doesn't matter if you have one or 12 successful businesses. If the conversation in your mind is one that is not of absolute love and compassion for yourself, what's the point? So going through Go, like looking back and seeing that young woman that was just so incredibly full of inner pain, you know, and so many unresolved issues and so many different misbeliefs, thought I wasn't worthy, I thought I didn't deserve it. That's how imposter syndrome shows up in the world, right? It's actually a misunderstanding in your mind that you're unworthy and that you don't deserve it in some way, shape, or form. And it's a misunderstanding because it's a lie. The truth is, we're all born worthy. 
The truth is we're all born fully deserving. And then the human experience teaches us something else and we end up creating another dialogue in our mind that's a constant lie. So I always encourage women and humans in general, I am a humanist at the end of the day, this is a human thing, to do the work to really transform that inner dialogue. Because if it is one that is speaking up for you, it not speaking up for you, but speaking down to you, well, what the fuck is the point of that, right? Like, I don't care. Like I said, if you have all these successful businesses, but you're like, you're butchering yourself in here, well, you don't want that. You start your own company because you want a sense of freedom. What's the ultimate freedom? Freedom within yourself. And so when I had the opportunity, although it presented itself as such a difficult time in my life, it turned out to be the biggest blessing, as things always are. Why is this happening? How is this happening for me instead of to me, is how I like to reframe difficult situations in our lives. But when that opportunity presented itself, I decided to do the work to transform and to recreate myself, transform my inner dialogue into one that is one of absolute love and compassion. I mean, I fuck up all the time. I am a human being, but I don't sit there and make myself feel like shit for it, right? I go, oh, okay, I made a mistake, I learned. Right? Like the other day, I was with my kids and I yelled at them. Normally, you'll be like, oh my god, I'm the worst mom ever, I feel so guilty, blah, blah, blah. But I just went, okay, I had a human moment, it's okay, I'm going to go and apologize to them. Like, it's such a shift in your experience of life when you're speaking to yourself from that place of unconditional love. And that's my biggest learning. That's my biggest learning that I love to help other women get to as well is find that unconditional love and authentic empowerment within yourself because without that what's what is the point <clears throat> and you're worth it absolutely thank you i have so many more questions i want to ask but i don't want to hog the mic here so does anyone else have any questions you'd like to ask panelists So there's a great book by Sally Hemelsman called How Women Rise. It describes the 12 habits that hold women back. I think really understanding um, sort of the tendencies that women have, seeing some of them include ruminating, some of them include like the perfectionist trap, I'm a recovering perfectionist. Um, it, it, it's really important to understand who you are, what you do, and why it matters. And I think that um, just, you know, I believe that leaders are readers and, you know, just Taking in as much knowledge as you can, you know, subscribing to podcasts, um, you know, signing up for newsletters, watching motivational videos, because it is hard. You know, as entrepreneurs, we are in an unusual and extraordinary circumstance. We have to face obstacles every single day, and I think one of the panelists saying, was saying that um, the only way through an obstacle is through. But I believe it's over, under, or through. So there's all, and I think that if you also have clarity of vision and really can understand like peripherally what's happening, and you can do that by you know, uh, having an established foundation of meditation. I'm an avid meditator, I meditate twice a day. I think you can finally unlock from the psychological drama that you, you were talking about. And then finally, just become more creative. A lot of people are like, how do you do everything I do? you do? And I said, 80% of my time, I'm in creative mode, and then 24% of my time, I'm in the like, oh, so, um, that was a lot, but read, um, surround yourself with fantastic people, uh, meditate, and get into some really good habits, uh, because it's a, it's, it's a long road as an entrepreneur. This question is for Cam. What was the defining moment in your path where you actually had the inner shift of, okay, now I'm going to turn this around and move forward and let go of yourself down? If you remember. Of course I do, very clearly. <laughs> um, this is interesting. So I'm a speaker with the State Department in a really great program. They have proven to ward off terrorism by helping women and children, uh, the youth, not children, but women and the youth in the Middle East create entrepreneurial projects. So I got a phone call from the State Department one day during like, not the best time of my life, and 
I just remember thinking like they had the wrong number. <laughs> like, why are they calling me? <laughs> and they asked me to go to Kuwait, and I was like, oh, okay, they're like, you're going to be a guest of the U.S. ambassador, you're going to be, you know, working with royalty, you're going to be doing all that. I'm just like, holy shit, this is awesome, okay. Um, and I remember being there, sitting across the table from the U.S. ambassador, on a round table with a bunch of other men in Kuwait, right, Middle East dynamics, one woman on the table, and they asked me my opinion about them building out their ecosystem, and I had such a great answer, to be honest, <laughs> to my own horn on that one. Like, I, I remember it, it, like sitting there, and with the conversation that was going on inside of me, like, holy shit, who is this woman? Is this who I have been my whole life? Is this who I've been holding back? I've been doing myself and everyone else such a disservice by not showing up in my true authenticity. And that was the moment that I had. That was like, it was just such a clear moment. And that's the moment I actually decided to be a coach. Because I realized how much I transformed by doing that type of work, the reprogramming and the transformational work and all of that. And that's what I want to give back. Because I, I realized what I'm actually capable of. And I want other people to experience the same. Um, this question is for Kalika. You're a such successful entrepreneur. And you're a mother, wife, and a boss. So how do you balance all this? What's the key thing to, to balance everything and be successful? Energy, not time, is the currency for high performance. So we heard from our members that, that students coming out of school weren't well prepared for the landscape. So we went to market, studied other schools that were doing really neat things. The D School, uh, Stanford, Boulder Digital Works, um, uh, Virginia Tech, all sorts of schools that had design, uh, digital marketing programs. We took the best of those 
and sat down and said, what, what would it look like if we were to start a school from scratch? And that was through our board members, um, people that come from different segments of the industry. And then we went to different schools and said, here's what we need. We want to be able to give your students jobs. We want to help you create curriculum. Um, we went to other schools, which I won't mention, but LMU welcomed us <laughs> with open arms because I think they, they understood the possibility of a public and private relationship, especially when many of those agencies are just down the hill or across the street in this case. So we went to market with that. We, we partnered with them and started to build curriculum, started to identify experts in, in the field and brought them in. Um, built the program out too so they were getting mentorship. We baked that into it from day one. So each team had a mentor that stayed with them through the semester, which, you know, one of the things I always told the students from day one too is you are meeting some of the best people in the industry. This is where you start marketing. This is how you network. These people care. They showed up to take time to help educate you. So go ahead and link in with them if that's all you do. But, but go ahead and say, can I buy you a cup of coffee and hear your story? And so um, we saw the success of the program and it's five years in now and I'm happy to report most of the students that go through the program have a job by the time they graduate and that's really what we want to accomplish. You also need to have a communication protocol. You need to understand how to receive and give feedback. With personal, uh, with personal responsibility, I believe that you know, when you do set up your meetings, you need to show up on time. You know, and you need to know exactly like how long you're going to be meeting. Because I believe that um, a mentor and mentee relationship actually has also three components. It's value, scarcity, and it's asymmetric. Um, when you are going to a mentor, they're not your peers. You're reaching out to them because they have information that you don't have. Um, I recently um, got my entrepreneur's master's program from MIT, and how they described it was, it's like you're a fly trying to get out of that, that glass pane, but your men, potential mentor can actually tell you, like, if you just go a couple inches, there's actually a door right there that you can get out. When you're an entrepreneur, and I've also had mentors myself too, when you're an entrepreneur, you just don't know what you don't know. So in a mentor-mentee relationship, you can gain tools like the Johari window, if you're not familiar with, or the Egan's triangle. Like, you, you have to learn and these tools so that you can learn how to communicate and, and better yourself as well. And then the last thing, is, um, the key to success is also trust. I think that if you if there's no trust uh, both ways, if you don't trust that that mentor is gonna give you the right information, um, then it also will not be a, a great relationship. And I really believe that there's a difference between com competent and confident um, uh, advice there's a lot of people that will give you confident advice, right? But they've never done anything that you're asking for. I mean, one of the um, uh, dolphins was talking about like patent. I'm like, my, I have a patent. Like, it would be great for someone to be able to ask someone about who has a patent about patents. Because when I was asking people like, should I get a patent for my person? Half the time people were like, no, it's too expensive. And I'm glad that I didn't listen to them because they never did. They never had a patent themselves. So it's really important to have um, um, competent advice or, or take competent advice. Because a lot of people will tell you no and just don't listen to those people. <laughs> Absolutely. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to ask before you wrap up? Okay, well, thank you guys so much for all your advice. And